Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. If Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so, our card tonight, today, is uh, the, um, <laughs> the Knight of Wands. So you have that Knight of Wands energy, very passionate, very fiery, very creative. And let's see what these tea leaves have to say. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell and I'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, now, we have two faces here. I have one here. This, the You can see the eye here. You can see the nose, the mouth, uh, kind of gazing this way. Now we have another one eyes, nose, mouth, kind of maybe like even a goatee. Um, and these are kind of, it's kind of merged together. And so I almost feel like this is, this is a person who, then we have all these kind of dog faces over here too. We have one, two of those. You can see the ears and the nose down here. The eye, um, same here, eye, nose, ear. So I almost kind of feel like, <sighs> mm, it feels like a, a coming to some kind of understanding about somebody who has been close to you, okay? Somebody in your life who um, you at one time were probably pretty good friends with, maybe um, even in a relationship of some kind. Um, but I feel like there's this real, I, I just even, as I'm picturing it in my head, there's just this abrupt moment where something changes. And it's like their mask has slipped a little bit. And you start to see, oh, okay, there's like a whole other person there's a whole other person. What, what they are showing me is maybe an aspect of themselves or it is like a really constructed, intentionally constructed persona. And I feel like in a way this left you kind of, it's almost kind of traumatizing I think sometimes, right? Um, when you have somebody who you love who you have decided to let into your life, into your kind of personal and sacred spaces, and they are not, they don't, they won't reveal themselves. They won't be themselves. And now that could be for so many different reasons, right? Um, it's not always nefarious. Maybe it is like a coping mechanism. Maybe it is something that has come about to deal with, um, you know, their own pain, trauma, whatever's gone on in their life. Uh, but it still can be so jarring when you have opened yourself up, right? You've opened your heart. You've opened your mind. You um, have, you know, invited them into your home. And, um, and if you're in a relationship with somebody like this, uh, yeah, you have like shared profound aspects of self, right? And so when you start to realize like, okay, so there's like a whole other, now we're all very complex beings, right? We all contain all of the archetypes and, you know, in different places in our life, we may seem quite different to different people. One person might experience this as, you know, some, this one person, this one, um, you know, mode of being and somebody else might have a completely different experience. Okay. That makes sense, right? That happens. 
But when you are close with somebody in an intimate way, doesn't have to be physical. That's not what I mean exactly. But when you are, you know, in a position where you are, you're sitting there heart to heart, <coughs> excuse me, or what you perceive to be heart to heart. Because you are, you are giving of yourself and then suddenly something happens and you see this other aspect of them and you think, what the heck is going on here, right? Who is this? What is this? You know, what's going, what, what do I not know, right? And that's the first thing. It's like, what have I missed? Uh... You know, have <laughs> why have they been lying to me or omitting, you know, um, and so on. So I do. I feel like there's this real sense of like two faces. Now, I don't necessarily think this is a case of like they've been running around kind of, you know, talking about you, working against you. And then, you know, they like put on like a real nice, nice kind of um, persona and, and energy towards you. Um, but I do believe, I believe that, you know, there, it, it's enough of a thing that you have witnessed that, yeah, it kind of put you off of this person. I think it, you know, and I understand that it would make me probably because of the way I am. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit paranoid. Um, I also have CPTSD and, um, you know, that's because of prolonged abuse in my childhood. So I have a hard time trusting people anyways, but when somebody makes me feel uncomfortable or unsafe, if I am just perceiving that, if that's realistic or not, ooh, I can't, right? It takes time for me to, um, you know, I usually distance myself. And if it's something that, if it's somebody that is important to me, then, you know, I will slowly kind of reacquaint myself with them. If if I, if I can, usually no, I'm just done. <laughs> so I feel like it's kind of a similar feeling like, okay, this is a little bit, and it maybe is that it was a newer friendship, a newer relationship. Um, or maybe it's been a long one. And then you're like, wow. Okay. This has been years of knowing you and what the heck is going on here? It makes you sometimes question your own ability to notice things. Are you perceptive? Did I get played? Is this something I... Was I so wrapped up in my own stuff I just didn't notice? Like, what is going on? Um, so I think this is something that maybe has already transpired. I feel like it could be... It, because the energy is so big, I feel like, yeah, this is like a situation that you have been going through right and uh or it has happened already and you i don't know something brought it up but you've been thinking about it okay and um and yeah i don't know it just doesn't feel good you know generally does not feel good of course not right uh, okay, so now we have a person up here, and it looks like they're in a little castle, okay? And we have the person inside. There's the head, the body. Um, now we have, it looks like maybe a little dog laying down. And I feel like there's just a sense of, well, here it looks like people kind of arguing, fighting on this side. This side, it looks like somebody fell off the side of a cliff. So I feel like it's kind of the situation of, uh, and there's a key, as I was about to say, locking yourself away. There's the key and the lock right there. Um, yeah, I feel like you've kind of gone into this mode of locking yourself away from a lot of these different 
things that are going on, the arguing, the fighting, people having little dramas and, and, um, my goodness, this time of year, it's like Christmas time or the, the, I should say winter, um, the winter holidays around that time, whatever holidays that you're celebrating. It's also summer holidays. Yes, I know. I realize <laughs> you in the Southern hemisphere have uh, summer at the same time. So between the winter holidays, summer holidays, and then we get into this time of year, right? Um, in the Northern hemisphere, we're into summer and going into winter in the Southern hemisphere. And I don't know what it is about people and within families and stuff, but my goodness, all kinds of little dramas happening, right? Just nitpicking and, and arguing and disagreeing. And I don't know. I think it's, they say that like things like, um, well, like crime goes up or, or whatever. Yeah. People are outside a lot more doing things during the summer, but I also think it's just something about, I don't know. For me, I almost get a little bit kind of manic feeling hypomanic, um, during the summer. I just feel like because of where I live, it snows so much during the winter and it's very cold. Uh, we get about you know, five, five months of nice, decent weather. Sometimes it's really hot and buggy, but, um, pretty good weather. And it's every moment of that nice weather month, you have to take advantage of it. So I feel like I'm just like, go, 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 go. So I almost feel like it's, you know, other people as well. Um, it's like we get all twisted up, you know, in ourselves. We're all kind of hyped up on this season. Um, now in the winters, right, it's kind of cooled down. Everything's a little slower. Maybe the weather's nice where you're at. Um, maybe you don't have super crazy winters, but, um, a lot of people in the house together, a lot of people, um, you know, getting sick. That's the other thing. We got a lot of flu season stuff going on in those colder months. Um, but you get irritated right up where I'm at, we call it, you know, cabin fever, uh, by February it is, you know, not to the level of the shining, but who boy, some days it, it, it feels, it feels, <laughs> it kind of feels like you're starting to lose track of reality. That's for sure. Um, so anyways, I do, I feel like there's just like turmoil just kind of, uh, nothing huge, just kind of, you know, uh, if you've ever been in the family group chats and oh, it seems pretty good trying to figure things out for different events and schedules and this and that. And then you get the side, the side texts where, you know, people are just bitching. Okay, I had to edit it out. I said a curse. <laughs> people, I was saying, you get a lot, it's like you get the side text and people just talking about each other. I was going to say B, the B word about each other, but <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. So, um, yeah, here we go. I'm going to cut that little thing off there uh, roughly. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, it does feel like that. I feel like you're just kind of in your own piece, though. It is really this, like, I'm just going to be doing my own thing. I'm going to be by the house. I'm going to be working on my little projects, um, you know, being with my animals, being with my dog, um, my family, whoever's there, you know, and not getting involved. Now, we also have the person falling off the cliff. So I almost kind of feel like this is somebody who's trying to penetrate your private life. Okay, this is like somebody who's trying to get in there, hang out with you, see you, maybe even date you. I don't know, but you are not having it. You have like this, you know, um, like a like a moat or something around your your fortress, your temple fortress, and uh, you're not having it. Nobody is welcome in. <laughs> Just the people that already belong there. Okay, let's see. We have this beautiful little apple right here. We also have, it looks like a slug. 
So with the apple, it's always a sense of an ease in health, okay? So if you have chronic pain, chronic illness, um, if you just haven't been feeling well lately, or um, maybe you are in good health, whatever that looks like for you, um, this is a time where everything is sustained. I will never say there's a cure. I will never say, you know, you're like, there's a miraculous thing happening. Um, no. But although sometimes, you know, if you're in pain a lot and then you have a moment where there's no flare ups and you have, you know, some days and weeks where you're feeling pretty good, that seems like a miracle. It absolutely does. So I do feel like there's a time where these things are going to kind of, you know, um, be at ease, a little more restful. OK, and, um, and that's something to really, uh, yes, splendor in a bit. Now, we also have the snail. So the snail to me is really, yeah, taking it easy, going slow, um, allowing yourself while you're in this kind of, you know, seeking peace mode, um, allow those passions to ignite for you. Looking for the beauty, the um, ecstatic, exciting belovedness in the subtle, the little things, okay? Going for a little walk, looking at the flowers, looking at the trees, feeling a nice breeze on you, um, you know, doing your crossword puzzle or, um, you know, having a beautiful uh, cup of tea or coffee or whatever it is, right? Um, the little moments, the little things, these are what make life beautiful, okay? Um, and I know that you know that Sagittarius, you're not unlike myself as a Virgo. We don't necessarily look for these extravagant, um, moments or events or, you know, grand gestures or anything like that. Um, we are usually people who find happiness in the little fine details of things. And so this is a time to remind yourself allow yourself to get into that mode and look for those things of love and gratitude and, and, um, and beauty. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we do have a boat you can see right here. <laughs> I don't know why I look at the monitor while I'm doing this and it's always off. I'm like, Ooh, here it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So we have a person up here. We also have a butterfly. So that's beautiful. We have a person standing in here. We have another person here. We have a horse, a person on a horse in the boat. Um, and it looks like a big horn. You can see this and then the, the horn. So I do, I, in my head, I can imagine the sound of a horn kind of, uh, like, a on a, what are those boats called? Like a little tugboat or like a ferry boat or something. Now we have a face up here. Here are the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And it feel, I mean, this, I don't know that face to me, feels like a youthful person, maybe in their, you know, twenties, thirties, Somewhere around there. Um, and it's weird. I feel like it's almost kind of somebody who uh, maybe you used to be good friends with. I don't know. But I feel like you're still cool. There's no falling out or anything. I think you just have lost track of one another. Um, I do think that they kind of keep up with you indirectly, maybe on social media and stuff. Uh, and it just feels like there, there's a sense of like this person maybe being, um, kind of motivated to reach out to you pretty soon here. Now we also have the boat. Okay. So the boat for me is always a sign of movement of energies in your life. Okay. So we also have the butterfly that's important because it is self evolution. This is a time where you are going through a metamorphosis, right? You are changing as a being. Okay. Um, with that horn, I feel like it really is kind of the starting point, like sounding the horn, you're about to get going. Okay. Um, 
Now with these other people in here, I, I just feel like it really is the sense of uh, having a great, it's just a great passion for, um, I'm trying to think, what is this? It is, it is like a, not, it's not a hobby really. I mean, it is kind of a hobby. It's something that you like doing. Um, but I also think you make some money with it. Like maybe you are like a woodworker. You make things with wood and you sell some of them. Maybe not your primary job. Um, but something that you do love doing and you do see some money come from it. Um, and I feel like this is a, this is a time where, you know, you're in your own space. You're developing kind of these, these new ideas, these things that you might try out, maybe new techniques. Um, maybe now you, maybe you've been making things and now you're thinking, well, why don't I start my own little business with this? Why don't I, um, you know, make like a store or, uh, maybe, or, you know, I don't know, make a channel on YouTube and start showing people how you do this stuff or, um, you know, whatever it is, something, I feel like there's something around this interest where you want to kind of grow it. Right. Um, and I think that there, it's it's something that you love so much. It comes, it's almost like second nature to you, and uh, and so I think this is kind of you know where you put your time while you're in this little mode of kind of being the hermit, and um, and this is it is it's a it's a worthy endeavor. It's something that we all should be doing, you know. Um, I tell my daughter, she's four, and she is at that age where she's starting to say, Mom, I'm bored. You know, you have all these things to do, kid. Um, you know, there's no reason. <laughs> I sound like my like my grandmother now. I think of my grandma telling me this when I was a kid. There's, there are so many things to do. You should never be bored. Um, you know, only people without imaginations uh, get bored and you have a good imagination. Um, so, you know, I feel like there are people in the world who just don't have things that they spend their time with. Like, you know, they work, they come home, they, you know, maybe sit and watch TV or whatever. Uh, fine. Right. There's not, I'm not judging. I do that plenty of days. Um, but I don't know. You know, we all have to like develop interests. That's so important in life to have things that we care about, things that are just for us. Maybe you do them with other people. Maybe it's like a family thing that you all like to do. Um, but we also need things that are for us, things that we can go do. Or, um, you know, maybe you're somebody uh, like myself. I have ADHD. Um, I need to keep my hands busy. I know a lot of people do things like crocheting or knitting or, you know, I don't know, origami, folding paper, you know, whatever it is, keeping, <coughs> excuse me, keeping your hands going and like usually kind of repetitive. Um, and that might be something too, right? Something that you can kind of do while you're doing other things. Um, but I think it is. And I, and I challenge you if you haven't, had a hobby or an interest recently or maybe you've had them and you've put them down for one reason or another um go find something to 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 do you know go on like one i go on tumblr i like tumblr but um you know pinterest or uh when like a crafting site or or a hobby site or whatever go to um a craft store uh, you know, whatever, whatever you have around you and just go look and see what kind of catches your fancy. You know, you don't have to invest everything into it. Don't, you know, don't go and spend $10,000 to start something you don't know if you like. Um, but go and find something, a little, um, little project you'd like to do. One that I've been talking about for like the last, I don't know, three or four years is I want to start doing the latch hook again. I've recently started doing um, cross stitching uh, this this winter I started and I really enjoy that. 
Um, but I, my, I had a great grandmother. Um, we called her uh, Baba, though. Um, and she did latch hook. And so, um, I don't know. I always thought it was really cool. I've done it before, and now I'm kind of like, I, I want to get into latch hook. I don't, that sounds kind of cool. <laughs> Just make a bunch of rugs. <laughs> oh, I spilled this on myself there. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we have a chair, we have a P. We have a, a animal up here kind of resting. So it looks like we have a shovel that's kind of in, we have a shovel that's kind of stuck in the ground. Um, and a person that looks like they were putting something in there, I almost like burying something. And, uh, and to me, it kind of feels like the first thing that came to my mind was like, oh, they're like burying a secret, you know? Um, and I'm trying to think. Kind of burying a secret, we have a person, we have a person kind of uh, looking on. So I almost kind of feel like it's like somebody, um, Oh, it feels like somebody who knew what was going on didn't didn't share the information. I almost feel like this is something from when you were younger. Almost like it's like a family secret or something. <clears throat> um, maybe something that involves you, maybe not. But I think it's like kind of at some point it comes to light. And you're kind of really, I think, hurt by this. Because... And I almost feel like it's like a grandparent that knows whatever happened, um, but did not tell you ever, right? Waited for you to have to come and ask. And it really, it feels like a betrayal, but I also think you kind of understand, you know, um, that this is maybe something that was painful for everybody. Maybe it was something... Um, that, you know, nobody wanted to talk about. It just wasn't something that was talked about. And uh, and I feel like that's something that has really, it's changed how you feel about people. And I think this is why um, we, we were talking about that two-faced person or the person that kind of is something that, um, other than what they present themselves to be. And I think that's why you're so sensitive to this is that um, there's something that happened, you know, in your youth. And it's like, uh, I feel almost kind of there's an irritation of having to uncover the mysteries of your family who are still around probably or were. And they had all the opportunity to kind of share with you. Um, but you've had to kind of go on this, you know, detective work to figure out what the heck was going on what happened here now we have the chair here it feels like a throne we have a p so I almost wonder if there was like a head of the family with a p name it is empty now so i feel like they are maybe transitioned okay um now we have the animal it looks like a deer as i'm looking at it now and I'm thinking that, you know, this is part of the spiritual work. I think that there's definitely an importance to knowing our self mythology, but there's also such an importance to knowing that we are not what has gone on around us. We are not, um, you know, although we keep genetic memory and we are very much a part of our line, 
our line of ancestors and elders and so on, um, that doesn't, it does not mean that we are limited by what has been done before us, right? And so I feel like this is a time of contemplation about, um, you know, first of all, kind of trying to let some of it go, you know, um, second, uh, or at least letting go this like intense need to know, maybe, um, knowing that you maybe will never know. And even if you find out, you might not ever understand all of the perspectives or the perspectives that matter, right? Um, you just get a story and it's out of context. It doesn't necessarily always make sense. And so, um, you know, I think that part of this is, it is, it's about letting that, that need to know go. And, um, you know, and trusting in yourself as an individual who is autonomous to all of that, right? Um, you know, and the other thing I think is making, forging a bond with your ancestors to um, be able to receive messaging from them, to have them kind of visit you in your dream world, in your visions, and so on. Um, because I think so often we get the most important information from these places versus what people will tell us about, you know, the histories of the family of, of each other and so on. Because so often, like I said, the context is not there and it's left to the perception of the, the teller, the storyteller, but also how they got the information and, um, you know, it's just, things are skewed. So yeah, of course we want to know about ourselves, but I think it's also important to go to the direct source. Okay. And that is, um, communing, communing with our, um, with our people through, um, through dreams and, and, uh, visions and this kind of thing. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you, we have the wild offering Oracle cards and I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to flip through, I'm going to stop where it feels right. Confidence, divine confidence is completely different from the bravado of the ego. You make space for something larger to take hold. Please fill me with your confidence, O oh love. Grant me courage I never knew I had. Grant me courage I never knew I had. All right. Sagittarius, I'm going to tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I love hearing from you. All right. With that, I will say again, I love you. Take care of yourself. We will talk in just a couple of days. All right. Bye.